Got the boat hooked up. I uh, got my fishing rods and all my stuff. I don't have bait. I got night crawlers uh, so I can catch bait. I uh, figured I'd do a little bit of flathead fishing and also scouting some public land. Killed two birds with one stone. Um, going to a spot I haven't really been to before but always kind of wanted to check it out. So uh, let's go see what we can find. Alright y'all, I stopped here at this spot. It was about four or five feet deep behind me and it just dropped off to 22, 23 feet. Notice all these, all this wood pile here. Big log jam and a big deep hole. Maybe not a big hole, but a deep hole right here. This is where the flatheads are gonna be. But first, I'm gonna get some scouting done. See if I can find me a good spot to deer hunt here this fall. See what kind of deer sign and bedding and food source and all that good stuff I can find. So uh, let's go check that out. Sprayed down pants so I don't get tore up with seed ticks and sugars. Brought my rubber boots in case it gets swampy because we are by the water. All right, right off the bat, I'm seeing sign of deer activity already. Got a bunch of stinging nettle in here. Actually. This, this type of nettle is called wood nettle, but it stings just the same. It's just a little smaller than stinging nettle. Regardless if it stings or not, the deer do eat it. Not everywhere I see it, but I've seen this before in certain places, usually with high deer density, so this is a good sign. The tops off of a lot of this nettle is eaten clean off. If I rub my hands against the underside of those leaves or up against the stem, it'll itch and burn for a few minutes. So I'm not going to do that. I've done that a million times already. But I like that. That's a good sign that there's a lot of deer in here. Let's see what we can find. Here's the great big thicket. But we got a nice little edge here of, of more mature trees. It's all silver maple pretty much. And box elder. No food trees. Also, one thing to note is going into season, the nettle will start to die out. It'll still be green in bow season, but that's not going to be a food source going into the winter. It's going to die back. So, here's a good trail. We got a great deer trail coming through here. It looks like it may have rained recently. You see the dirt looks like it was rained on and then dried up somewhat. But I'm not seeing much for tracks. It looks like one heck of a trail. In fact, you go over to this little stick pile here just look at how the sticks are more matted down and broken just straight through where this trail comes through that's actually a really good trail just not any recent sign on it they were in here at one point quite a bit because of the all the browsing on the nettle all right i just stepped out into another edge here off of that river edge there that i was just in we got an open somewhat open edge it's got saplings growing in it and then here's the big thicket and what this tells me is they used to bush hog this and uh, they bush hogged a strip around the field more often than they cut the whole field. So this strip around the field was cut most recently, but it's been a few years. You can tell by the size of the saplings coming up. And then this was a CRP field years ago. I don't know how old these saplings are. They look like less than 10 years old, so it's, o it's only been a few years probably since they cut it. But it's getting real thick. So thick, I don't know if I can go in here. So I'm going to be poking around looking for breaks or changes in the habitat but let's uh let's go see what we can find i'm just gonna start walking well we got our first deer turds and we're still seeing a lot of browse this one's recent there's no brown on the tip of that stem this one was probably eaten today or within the past day or so that one too this one's got brown on the tip this one does so those were eaten a while ago deer are continually feeding on this nettle The last time I noticed this heavy of feeding on stinging nettle was in another property that's private property, but it's maybe overpopulated, but at least very densely populated with deer. So this tells me that there's a whole lot of deer in here. All right, we got to some kind of a break. 
what, what used to be the CRP field. It looks like it's got a lot shorter over here. It's still very thick. Still don't know if I can do much with it as far as go in and find a place to hunt, but I'm just going to peek out here, see if it gets more open anywhere. Now a lot of times, a lot of times with CRP fields when they are left to grow up like this, most of them will get way too thick and way too tall to, to even bother with. You just treat it as a sanctuary, the deer are safe in there, and you got to hunt the edges of it. Sometimes you'll get pockets of the field that never really grow up. Whether it's like a well-established patch of goldenrod or sage grass or some kind of lower growing weed that really dominates one spot that will keep saplings and taller weeds from growing in an area if it's if it's got the right vegetation growing there. So that's always something to potentially look for when setting up around these fields, especially around the edge where there's trees you can get up in. Because with this tall weeds, even if the weeds are shorter in a spot, you're still gonna have a, they're still gonna be too tall to even think about hunting off the ground. So we still, we, if we find a good spot in this thicket where it's not as tall, it's still gotta be within bow range of a tree that I can get up in. So that's something to keep in mind. This is really tall, it's iron weed behind me. Typical of river bottom stuff, it, it grows bigger and better because it's got more fertile soil and it's got more water. Everything grows faster and bigger and taller down here in the river bottoms. Basically, it looks like I'm gonna be walking the edge of this thing. The deer are traveling this edge near the river constantly every day, probably every morning, every evening, at night. All times of day, whenever deer are moving, I bet they're somewhere along this edge, but this is a long river bank that's public, a lot of huntable land along this bank. And I'm looking for anything that, that breaks the monotony of this river bottom habitat. It's basically the same all the way through, except for a few small differences like that clearing. Although I don't know if that's really enough of a feature to draw deer into this spot. It's just something that caught my eye. But another thing is where this uh, thicket went from really tall saplings to shorter saplings and tall weeds. The break between, it looks like it was two different fields that were cut at different times. That's, a, that's another edge that's going away from the river between taller and shorter thicket. That, that could be a possible spot to set up because it, it's an intersection of two edges at least. And we know the deer are traveling this one and they're probably traveling the other one. There we go. I to bring that back to the boat. It's heavy, I don't feel like carrying it. All right, so I've come around this thicket and I'm coming back up, upriver on the other side of it. Probably hear the tractor. There's a slough right over here and across that slough is private land. That's where that tractor's running. It's just pretty obvious. And look at that, droppings again pretty obvious that these deer just use this edge like a freaking runway. One way that uh, I would like to hunt this spot is during rifle season. When the canopy's off you can see a lot farther, shoot a lot farther, and then I can, you know, have a better, a better chance of shooting something. Okay, I'm noticing right here the Grass is more matted down here. I don't know if y'all can really tell, but there's little holes like there and there. They're not really super obvious, but they're just like pockets that are all about the same size where you can see through to the ground almost. That's where deer put their feet in. There's a whole milkweed stalk that's bent over. All this grass is matted down. I'm gonna say it's a pretty well used trail. Let's follow it in here. No, I mean, it looks like they go straight into here. There's nothing else distinguishing about this except the fact that the weeds are more matted down with what seems to be a pretty well used trail coming into the thicket here. Uh, so I'm going to mark it. There's some trees I could hunt out of right here. It's kind of thick, but it's a spot to keep in the back of my head. I did get a glimpse of that private field over there and it's standing corn, so I'm not sure what the tractor's doing. He's probably off on the other side of the field. The sound's carrying. I don't know. That's going to be something of interest 
you know, when they cut the corn going into season. I know if they cut it around the start of bow season before the acorns really start dropping, and I'm sure there's acorns across the slough somewhere. But if they cut it early enough, the deer will be piling into that field. I'm sure some of them will be coming from over here. And yes, they're going to have to swim the slough, which they can and they will do. We're coming up here on something that caught my eye on the map. So across the slough, the cornfield's going to change to woods. And on my side, the short thicket's going to change to tall thicket. So we're going to be like in a central location for edges where edges come together. Maybe we'll find something. Maybe we'll find an oak tree. That would be pretty cool. I just flushed a big bird. I think it was a buzzard. And I just saw something in the slough. Something you don't really want to see. We're going to have to go investigate this. Interestingly enough, the slough here is rock bottom. I thought it was going to be all mud, and it's shallow. This is definitely a crossing. There's definitely a deer that died in the water. It was being eaten on. And we'll find out what's up with this. So we got a younger doe, not a not a fawn, but maybe only a year old from last year's fawn. The buzzards, I thought it was shot at first, but I think the buzzards have just got into two of the easier parts. And she hasn't been here too terribly long because it looks like the buzzards just got to her. I would have to guess she probably died from EHD. There's always a few deer every year that do, and they typically will go to water when they're sick and dying. So this is pretty typical. Um, usually their, their hooves get messed up, but uh, I'm not really seeing that. I'm not sure what killed this deer. Could have been a farmer shot it eating in his corn, who knows. But she died in the creek and there she is. One thing I do like about this spot, it looks like a drainage comes in here, but more importantly, the water is shallow, like not even up to my rubber boots. And this is a place where deer can cross. This is going this is gonna be marked on the map so I remember exactly where it is. This is a very important place for when that corn is cut because a lot 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 of deer are gonna be hanging up in here, holding up for the day, staying in the shade in the thick cover. Yeah, excuse the scratches on my arms. I uh, slipped when I was cutting a tree the other day. I don't even know where I got that. But um there's, uh, there's going to be deer bedding up here all throughout the day. They'll stay up in here all day. They got all the cover and browse they need. And then evening time, they're liable to come across here. I'll bet you there will be whole doe groups filing across here going out to the corn. Definitely marking this spot. Definitely plan on being back here at some point. I don't know if it'll be early season, mid season, or late season, but I really like it here because they can cross the slough easily. Agriculture over there, all the thick cover they need. Here we got a couple of different sets of tracks, some older ones, doe and fawn tracks. Oh yeah, here we got a lot more. There we can really see where the deer have been coming through. Fawns, bigger tracks, probably all does. Probably just doe groups coming through here like crazy. Definitely, this is the most interesting spot I've found yet and possibly one of the first places I'll come out here to hunt. Alright, I just walked a few more yards and I found my first deer beds right here on the bank. There's our oak trees way back there on private. Well, I'm going to try to cut through this tall thicket and make my way back towards the, the boat side find the boat because I forgot to mark where I pulled up so I'm just gonna have to walk the bank and find it this looks like this could have been a rub several years ago one thing that's really kind of got me stumped is the lack of buck sign you'd think I'd be seeing rubs from the past season or two with all these saplings 
and I'm walking through all this thick stuff. I have not been seeing hardly any buck sign. Definitely doe groups, does and fawns in here. Could be a great doe killing spot. Now I'd like to think with this many does in here, come November, there's going to be bucks running all, all through here. But usually when that happens, they leave sign. There's going to be rubs. Even if the bucks only visit in November, that's when they're going to be doing the most rubbing. So, kind of confused. So I'm not sure why the lack of buck sign. Doesn't mean bucks aren't in here. Doesn't mean they're not in here during the rut. I might not have found... This, I might just have walked all the wrong places. Or they might just not have left much sign in here for whatever reason. I don't know. Here's another bed right here. It was matted down. We're right here by the main river. My boat's just a little ways down this way. So I'm gonna take the boat out and find some bluegills. Got night crawlers, and uh, we're gonna go back down to that log jam and see if I can't pull a big flathead out of here. Check out this black gar. Not the bait I was looking for. I mean, this would be good bait. That's also good eating. I guess I'll give this one a free pass so he can get bigger. Today he's lucky. We're looking for bluegills so he can catch the big cats. Oh, there's a big pot of shad right there. Uh oh. I don't know if they're big enough to net. Thankfully, I got my cast net. Well, this cast net's really a mess. Big old pot of little shad. Pretty sure they're all too small for the net. Wait, well, maybe not. All right. We got backup if I can't catch any bluegills. Glad I had the cast net with me. Hey, at least we got bait. Check that out. I just lost a freaking bait fish, a brim or something. Let's try again, it's over by this tree. Finally, we got some real bait. Here we go, shell cracker. Well, I'm starting to catch them pretty quick, so I might as well go for a couple more, right? First line is just going to be two shad. Well, I'm reeling up all my lines and there's a fish on one of them. He had me up under uh, under the logs real bad. I thought it was a log. There is a flathead. I actually caught one. There we go. I caught one after all. Probably about five or six pounds. Good healthy little flatheads. Let's get let's let them go.